Hello, everybody. What is going on? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Queen's Lounge podcast. Welcome to the lounge. It has been a very, very long time since the last time I've done an interview. I am so excited about my special guest on today. She is a, a guest that has been on the podcast once before. We had such an awesome time. I had to ask her back again. She has been doing so many great things in the community. Um, she's been doing so many great things as a teacher. She's an author. Okay, period. So I'm so excited to announce her yet again, Ms. Dayon Richardson. How are you, ma'am? Oh, my goodness. I am so excited to be here with you in the Queen's Lounge. Okay. I mean, yes. <laughs> okay, I'm here for I'm so excited to be here with you again. Awesome. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation to come on the podcast and just discuss some of the things that you have going on. I am truly excited for you because you are doing big things. I was uh, telling her earlier today before we got on that uh, every time I get a notification or get on Facebook, it's something that she's posted that she's a part of or being nominated for or honored for. So I'm so excited for her. God is doing real big things in her life and I am so excited for her. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and chop it up. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pull up all the stuff we're going to discuss today because there's so much of it. I had to write it down. Yes. Honey, so that I would not miss anything because we definitely yes. got to talk about it all here on the lounge. Talk, we okay? got to talk about it. Okay. Period. So the first thing I want to discuss is the last time that I had you on the show, we discussed a book that you were actually were in the process of um, pushing out, mm -hmm. which was Our Gift Grace. Yes. Now tell us how that's going. Okay. So Our Gift Grace. It's officially out. Come on and advertise. Okay. Come on okay. and advertise. She's here. Okay. She's here. Um, and my students have been able to read her in my classroom. Um, I was able to release her at uh, Black and Brown Books KC. Um, okay. It's off Main. It's a Black-owned bookstore. Um, and it was so organic how we even connected. Um, and so I was able to release my book in her bookstore. Oh, um, and awesome. so, yes. So not only can you buy my book off of my website, but you can also buy it in her bookstore. Um, but it's basically, you know, just the story of two siblings learning that you are your, they are your first friend. Aww. They are the first one that shows unconditional love and they are the yes. first one to show you grace. Yes. Um, my sister and me, we did not get along. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but she's one of my best friends now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she was the first one to show me unconditional grace. And so I dedicated the book to her, my other sister, Leah, and then Eris, my niece, who's a great little sister to my nephew. Oh, that's awesome. I can attest to having a younger sibling because yes. both of us are the older siblings. Yes. Uh, my brother and I, we actually had a pretty good relationship growing up and we are tighter than ever now. Um, that was my very first best friend and still is one of my best friends. And him and I are just super, super uh, tight. So it I can definitely different. attest to that. Yes. It now, different. I don't know how it was for you, but me having the opposite sex as a sibling was very different for me. And I used to always want my mom and dad to have another one so I can have a sister. <laughs> right. You know, but it didn't quite work out like that. It didn't work out like that. And not at all. Because we were both girls. Like uh, she was yeah. playing with my Barbies. And like I want to play it. I'm like, mm mm. Yeah. And yeah. we were seven years apart. Oh and wow. So we were like at different stages of life, like all right, the time. Right. Um, like dang, you can't go smooth with your friends if Natalie can't go. So I'm like, I know, right? But why like, do parents do that though? Why do parents always have to do. like make you include your younger sibling? Yes. That was the great benefit of having a brother yep. because he had his own set of set a set separate set of friends. Yep. So that was really good. But when it came to like family functions, like going out with cousins or mm. going somewhere where you know males can go, yes. I definitely had to include them. Absolutely. See, they gotta go. And see, and I don't understand why. It didn't make sense to me. <laughs> but now I think they wanted to just be kid free. No, nah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, what it was. It's so wild because now, you know, we both adults. Uh-huh. I talk to her every day. That's like you so said, awesome though. You know, she became one of my best friends. And um, I feel like from the book perspective, most families can attest to this from mm -hmm. the siblings or the parent. You you trying to say, be nice to your sister. Be nice yes. to your sister. And so um, I thought that it was a book that most families and students could relate to. 
I like that. That's really, really good. I really like that. I I feel like we are very fortunate to be able to be older siblings. And uh, whether it be, you know, having a sister or having a brother, you know, having to take them with us when we don't want to. I right. think those relationships are very organic. You know, those are relationships that are kind of started from the beginning. But I also believe that the parents had a role in that as well, because I feel like if they didn't, you know, push them to go with us or if they didn't want, you know, want us to watch and babysit and things like that, the relationship wouldn't be, you know what I mean? As tight knit as it, as it is, or, you know, um, yeah, it wouldn't have, you know, turned out the way that it is now. Cause unfortunately some, some siblings don't have the testimony that we have when it comes to, you know, their, their siblings. And so, you know, I can only pray that, when my son gets older and we have another kid that, you know, he'll he be able to have that same, uh -huh, that same type of relationship with his siblings because there's nothing like it. And it shows, you know, like my sister, I watch how she um, mothers my niece and my nephew. Mm -hmm. and she's very aware of like how they interact as siblings. Yes. So I know it impacts. And so she's like, be nice to your sister. She's the only one you got. Yeah. And it's like that something clicked in her as a sibling to where yes. I'm able to see and it shows because Eris she's very protective over her big brother oh that's so cute yeah. and she's like mm -mm, that's my Emery you know <laughs> oh, she's very that's cute protective. yes I really cool. really like that I really love that and it starts <laughs> at that age it does it yes so while we're speaking on the book I know that um I told the storm is doing phenomenal um, I know a couple people personally who have purchased the book and they are loving it. Now that I have a child of my own, I definitely got to hit you up sis, so I can get both of those. Absolutely. Because I definitely want to read them to son um, because he's very attentive, even at a month old. He's, he's looking at you, listening, you know, watching your mouth, listening yeah. to what you're saying um, when you're calling his name. Like he's very attentive, even at a month old. So Dang. I definitely want to start those type of things early, reading to them and, you Absolutely. know, interacting with them with conversation and words and speaking, you know, into his life at an early age. So I'm going to be hitting you up definitely. So Girl, what I, yes. Okay. What I love, not only about I Told the Storm, but Our Gift, Emery, is how you are building off the books. Yeah. And what I mean by that is the dolls <laughs> that go along with the book. You know what I mean? Uh, my husband is very animated. Right. <laughs> and when I say animated girl, he's reading in different voices depending on the character. Like oh, he's that guy. And so son loves it. Son yes. really, really loves it. And so having the dolls, I thought was a perfect addition to the books because it kind of brings the book to life. You know it what I mean? Does. And I love that. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to show you the dolls, but my class kind of done kidnapped them, girl. They, uh -oh. in, the, they in my class, girl. <laughs> um, and so um, the beautiful thing that I really, like I spent a lot of time because I started working on the Grace doll. Um, a, I want to say the beginning of January. Uh -huh. and it took me a long time to get her done. Really? Just because I wanted her to be for sure an African-American girl. Yeah, and so like I worked, I worked with um, a factory in China, the same one that did my Emery doll. Wow! And it was important to me that her hair texture, yes, her skin tone, her accessories, yes. because I didn't want it to be misinterpreted as anything else. Uh huh. But a black girl, that's and it. It hit different when I introduced both of them to my class because they would say stuff like "She looked like me," or "He looked like him," <laughs> you know, and that was. That's what was most important to me was that my students could see themselves in what I created. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, I was able to uh, uh, start my LLC, wow. um, which was Mirror Mirror Books, where um, my goal is that students can always see themselves in anything I create. I so, love that. Thank you, girl. Whether that's my books, whether that's my dolls, T-shirts, yes. backpacks, you're going to see yourself um and what I create because for so long we weren't able to see ourselves in the books right. that we read, in the dolls that were at the store yes um, and so I had a lot of fun it was challenging at times creating the doll but now that she's here I'm I'm happy oh that was worth it it was absolutely worth it. that's yeah. awesome now something else I noticed that you have is uh and I think I seen it on your story are like magnets or stickers yes so what's I that let me let me see what that is Okay, let me show you a couple of Because I thought that was so adorable. I said, oh, Girl. those are cute. Okay, so I have um, like little button pins. 
cute. Um, of both characters. Thank you, girl. And so what I do is I put one on my sleeve. Uh-huh. I'm keeping Grace on my side. You know? I love that. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So um, like I have like stickers. Um, I have like stickers that, uh, I mean, button pins that you can put on your clothes or backpack. Mm-hmm. Stickers you can put on water bottles. Anything that can keep wow. it in your forefront. Um, that representation of what those characters mean. Yes. You, you know, yes. like for I Told the Storm, I've had people that said that anytime it's a thunderstorm, their child pulls that book out. Um, I so, love that. Girl, it just, it just means something when you know that families are able to correlate their own experience to it. Um, it helps to stay with them longer. And so, yeah, it does. The buttons and the stickers and um, the keychains. They're all a way for students to keep that in their forefront and for families to keep it close. I love that. One thing I really love about the two books is not only is it based off your niece and nephew, but it's also um, another way for the kids to kind of, like you said, relate. You know what I mean? I love that. And the fact that they get to see themselves. Absolutely. I think that is so important. It's so important. It's a beautiful thing. And um, in the back of Our Gift Grace, um, I had a dedication page. Oh, wow. To Brianna Taylor, Mike Brown, and George Floyd. Wow. Um, and if you don't mind, can I read what I wrote? You sure can. Because I think that this was something that um, my students, they knew all the people. And wow. I don't know if it makes me sad yeah. or it makes me more aware of what I put in my book. Um, but it says to forgive a country that has ignored our pleas, our cries, our videos, the evidence and the evidence that requires grace. Wow. To get up every day and choose love when hurt and pain are staring us down. That's grace. Wow. Families who've lost a loved one to racism, discrimination, and violence. May grace find you in your quiet moments and keep you safe. As you heal, grow, and learn to love again, May you remember you are never alone. Matthew 28, 20. I love that. And Thank the you. words hit so like close to home for some people. It really does. And um, sharing that with my students, because I feel like the concept of grace can be so foreign. Mm-hmm. Um, of what that looks like. And so bringing it to their level so where they can understand grace is not this. Like they say, when, forget, when you forgive somebody, it has less to do with them and more to do with you. Yeah. So when you choose to give grace to somebody, it's freeing you up to love again. It's freeing you up to keep going. Um, and so showing that to my students and having those hard conversations, because they get it. Even yeah, though they, they do. Third, fourth grade, they get it. They're very smart. Yeah. Very smart. And they're aware of what's going on around them with our culture and, and society. Um, and so... Yes, it's a children's book, but I feel like it's also a family book that can be good for conversation. And I also appreciate teachers like yourself, because when you have things that are going on outside of the classroom Mm -hmm. and you have parents that explain it and then you have kids that come to school and talk about it, even in the fourth grade, you know, that's such a young and innocent age still. Mm -hmm. And they're still having to hear and having to process what's really Mm -hmm. going on in adult world. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. And so to have teachers like you to be able to explain it on a kid's mm-hmm. level where they're understanding it, but it's not over their head. Right. Cause we're going to, we're going to bring it like, um, this week we did, uh, job applications where they can uh, apply for a class job. Listen, you doing a uh, month year olds? Cause listen, we ain't playing. And I okay. said, I, I did interviews yesterday and then on the application, they had to put if you had any experience. And so some of them That's said, cute. I got you. I got chores at home. I take the trash out. I, I love it. it. And I said, okay, she done proven to be responsible. Okay, you know, and so with that, next week, we'll start, uh, get, they'll get a paycheck. Wow. Um, we'll have class bills. Because they already know families have bills. Yes, so it's absolutely. Like, okay, what bills do we have? We have electricity, because we use the computers in our classroom. Yes. <laughs> we have pencils, because we use supplies absolutely then, you know and any other fines based off of behavior but I try to bring real life into the room um because economics is something that they're gonna always need absolutely they're gonna always need to know how to balance their money how to save 
Yes. And so they really look forward to that. And so I had a lot of kids like, who getting the job? Who's getting the job? I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's on Monday. I'm going to post the jobs on Monday. I love that. I love that. And I think being able to have kids not only go to school, but just be, not only go to school and just sit and hear, but to be involved, I yes. think makes a big difference in them actually obtaining what is being taught. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I lo- listen, sis, you bomb. Okay. Girl, we out here. The Lord listen, is- and he teachers gives- like you are so bomb. Because y'all do not, you, you all do not have an easy job. Listen. I'm telling you. And I feel like the whole country is in such a disarray in terms of education. Yes. yes. Um, we lost a lot, a lot of teachers due to how students came into the setting after the pandemic behavior yes. social emotional everything was crazy overwhelming it was a lot and so um my school district tried something new at the elementary level uh-huh. we're doing like middle school to where i'm teaching reading and writing a teacher's teaching math a teacher's teaching social studies and science okay and so that means i now have 120 students by yourself by myself girl so i have Woo. four classes where i teach the exact same thing and this is in 10 years of teaching. Oh my lord. I ain't never done this. Okay. Never so this done is this. this is stretching you. <laughs> it's, it really is stretching me. And yes. so the reason behind doing it is there will be some students who would get like a teacher who was certified. Uh-huh. Because teachers were quitting. There were some students that were getting like a long-term sub. Uh-huh. Or somebody who was just thrown in the class because there's nobody to watch the students. And so now they're pushing and so some students were getting this level of education yeah some weren't and so a way to level it out is say okay everybody's coming to her for reading and writing that's a good idea yeah so based on strengths and so you know it's the best interest for the kids and so any stretching that I have to do it's like okay I'll I'll push myself a little bit because I know it helps all students get that level of of experience because mm-hmm. some, some kids like man I want to be in Miss Richardson's class now everybody <laughs> yes and I know they're loving it I know they're loving it yeah. okay so additional to the two books mm-hmm. the stickers the pennants you also have cutouts I do and now, do you awesome. use those as demonstrations in your class as well you know they in there girl and uh listen I'm here for it yes they're in my classroom and I tend to take those to like vending events as well that's awesome. Um, yeah, because it kind of draws people in. They're like, who are those people? Yes. It's like, come on over. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you about the books. Let me tell you about the books. And sometimes my sister, well, most times, my sister would bring my niece and nephew. And so they would have the opportunity to like sign books. Oh, I like, love that. And these are who the characters about. And Eris, she's four, but she know how to do her hand, her name. Oh, I love that. Yes, girl. So she'll sign the books, honey. Her and Emery will both. Okay. I'm yes. here for that. Yeah, the I cutout, love that. Yes, my um, I was able to get one of the cutouts as a gift. And then the other cutout from Party City. They did like a really? turnaround. Yes. Wow. So and I didn't even know Party City does all that. Girl, that I think the highest cutout you could get is like six, six wow. feet tall. Um, and that one was five. And so wow. you, they, that's a really good deal. And it wasn't that expensive at all. And the turnaround time was great. And the colors are vibrant. It's just a really good way to like catch your attention. That's awesome. So from what I gather, when it comes to the books, the magnets, the cutouts and things like that, you're a very visual teacher. Yes. Is that true? Am I right on that? Very true. Um, I write my lesson plans out still. Yeah. Most most teachers use the computer. I'm like, mm-hmm. even 10 years later? 10 years later. I have a, a lesson plan book from every year. Wow. Every year. And so every now and then I like to go back and see like, what was I doing the first week of school mm-hmm. in 2015? Some of the read alouds I still do. Wow. Um, and so it's cool to see the evolution of like, dang. Yes. This is how it changed grade to grade or year to year. Um, but I am very, very visual um, person. And so my lessons, they visual, okay? I, I know got, that's right. We got, we got to see it. We're going to feel it. Yes, that's me. I'm a very visual learner. Yes. Very visual learner. Are all your students in the same grade? And see, that's nothing. We have, I have third and fourth grade. Okay. 
So it's like mixed classes. So I'll have some third and fourth grade in all four classes. Wow. Now, does that make it hard for your lesson planning? Um, sometimes it does because like, I'm not just teaching third grade standards. I'm teaching fourth grade standards as well. Right. Um, and so making sure that I'm challenging those fourth graders, but not pushing my third graders beyond repair. Uh -huh. um, and so that's been kind of interesting. We just finished testing though. So I haven't been able to get into content much, um, which was kind of like, why are we testing right now? I need to be trying to get to know everybody. I don't want to be testing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a whole nother month, girl, because let's see. Okay. Okay. I, I feel some kind of way about that, but yeah. I'm excited to really start getting into content because that's where the need is. They need, yes. that, you know, that's assistance. That's awesome. Okay. So I want to talk about your LLC, which yes. is uh, Mirror Mirror Books LLC. So how did you come up with the name? I know you gave a little... Um, mm -hmm. A little indication of you wanting it to be um, kind of like a business where the kids can actually see themselves in whatever product that you put out. What else is additional to that? Okay, so I, it's, it was really a God thing. Um, me thinking about the name was something I had been praying on. Like I was really like praying. I knew I had my meeting um, in the morning time with uh, Kansas City Gifts or Gift mm -hmm. KC. Girl, they are. Yes, a I've heard of them. They are. Mm -hmm. They are the bomb. They I've heard of them. The and I'm actually doing a, a course through them, an entrepreneur course through them right now. Oh, wow. The bomb. So okay. check them out for sure. I sure um, will. Um, and so I knew I had my appointment to do my LLC. And so I've been praying all week, like, Lord, help me with this name. I want this name to reflect you. I want this name to be the bomb. And I kept, yes. hearing, I kept hearing mirror. I just kept hearing mirror. And one of my friends tagged me Right before, right when I finished my devotion that morning, one of my friends tagged me in an Instagram post and it was a teacher that had like a box. Um, and she kept telling the students that inside of the box was her favorite student. And so all the kids, they want to go up and go look in the box. And so every kid is looking in the box and they laughing, but you don't know what's inside the box. Uh -huh. So at the end, she goes, she takes her camera up there and it's a mirror. Wow. And I said, okay, Lord. So it is me. I love it. Okay, Lord. I said, all right, enough said. And so um, from there, I was like, okay, Lord, it is mirror, mirror books. Um, because it's like, you're looking at yourself. You're looking at yourself every time Dayan creates something. You're able to see you. Um, and research is still the same. You know, mm -hmm. over 70% of children's books are of either white characters or animals. That's a big percentage. 70%. That's a lot. And That's so for lot. me, it's a lot. And so for me to get a small opportunity to change that narrative, um, I want to do anything I can to do that. Um, and so from there, like I've been trying to raise funds to have like a Black Scholastic book fair at my school. Love it. Where every student can leave with a book by a Black author and just Love trying it. to take this name and yes. really do something with it um, because they deserve that right. And as the uh, reading teacher, I had all students bring their favorite book to class. Almost every kid brought a Dr. Seuss book. And I, I love was Dr. Like, Seuss growing up. <laughs> but you know, that's the book they have at home. Yeah, yeah. They have at home. Few, if any, were able to bring a book that looked like them. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just like, giving them access to those books as well as the classics. Mm -hmm. um, and so my, my, my goal is that they can say like, Hey, I can go on this website and I'm gonna see people that's going to look like me. That's it. I'm gonna see people that's, I'm gonna see somebody that looks like me. That's the hero. That's the, the champion. That's the brave, the beauty. Yes. And my narrative of what beauty looks like is somebody that has natural hair it is somebody with braids and beads yes that's how grace's hair is in the book yes um and so just trying to change the narrative over what we see of ourselves because i know as a young age that wasn't what i heard often from school but it was mm -hmm. what my parents told me like they were very adamant of like mm -mm, girl you look beautiful yes you are gorgeous you are intelligent and so just continuing to reinforce that at school.
I love that. I don't think that we understand how important it is or understand to the magnitude of how important it is that kids really see what us looks like yes. in, you know, certain types of forms. You know what I mean? Because I feel like what they see and what is being taught can kind of sometimes clash or it can be very blurred lines. Yes. You know what I mean? And then it's almost what they want to envision themselves being is it's not um, um, untainable and it's not unrealistic, but it's almost like this is not the only thing. Right. This is not all that, you know, we as a culture offer. Your hair ain't got to be straight to be cute. Period. It don't have to be straight. It could be an Afro. It could be an Afro puss. It could be your hair look good just how it is. You don't have to be a man to not cry. You know what I'm saying? Like showing my boys, like you could, hey, your feelings was hurt. Yes. Let's talk about that. You're not soft because your feelings was hurt. And I had a cute little boy yesterday. Uh-huh. Um, he was in another class and he just was a crime. And it was because he had been on point all class, but his table had got in trouble. And so uh-huh. every table lost the reward. Yeah. And it's just like he 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 felt comfortable being, you know, in those Vulnerable. feelings. Yeah. Yeah, without being judged. Ain't nobody gonna be like, man, dry them tears. Men don't cry. No. His feelings is hurt. Yes. Give him space to feel that and let's comfort him in that because he works hard. Yes. Um, and so changing the narrative of what a strong black man looks like at mm-hmm. this age. Um, because I know like schools as a whole have feeling so much violence, um, so much violence, so much anger and aggression because they're not sure how to deal with those feelings. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Give me a second since I had some pop up on my computer. Yes. Okay. It's giving me my time limit. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. So another thing I want to um, kind of talk about or discuss really briefly is future books. Yes. Are you working on another book? I mean, Girl. I told the storm is bomb and yes. it's like selling yes. crazy. I yes. give grace is selling crazy. You know yes. what I mean? You, The books that have come out are already doing so very well. So I know that those are not the only two that are up Girl. under your sleeve. I know you got more. Girl, you better speak it to my life. Um, <laughs> and it's it's so it's such a crazy thing too because I almost posted it online this morning. Um, one of my students at recess this week asked me, can you write a book about me? And I said, you know what? I have not wrote a book about my class or my students. Uh huh. And so um, I was thinking of writing a book dedicated to all the students I've had and calling it my favorite class. And it'll oh, just love it. all the students that I've had over the year and how I look forward to coming to them every day. That's awesome. Um, yes. And so that'll probably be my next children's book. Okay. Um, and I've been working on a teacher manual. Oh, okay. Come on and do it big then. Uh. Listen, girl. <laughs> been working on the teacher's manual yeah. um, to kind of bring to life what it looks like to have class community, what it looks like to have fun, wear them costumes. Okay. My favorite real outs. Um, and so it would be kind of like the teacher's cookbook. You know, you can take whatever recipes you want out of it um, and use them for your class. That's awesome. I love that. That's really, really dope. So I know that you have a, a illustrator, a young yes. lady who, you know, you kind of collab with that mm-hmm. does all your artistry for your books. Do you plan on in the future or for your next upcoming books to collab with another writer? Ooh, that would be really cool. And the beautiful thing about Kansas City, girl, there is a lot they everywhere of authors uh-huh. that are coming out. And I would yes. love to collaborate um, just because it's, it's so much talent. Mm-hmm. And we see a need, and girl, we coming out. Okay. okay? Yes. Out. That's a brilliant idea. Girl, go ahead, write that down. <laughs> no, for real. I love that. Yes. It would be amazing just to put the two creative um, ideas together and just to see what y'all come up with. Girl, listen. Because I can guarantee you it's going to be bomb like the other two books. Crystal, Kia, y'all <laughs> hear this? Hey, listen, ladies, reach out. Up? Inbox, text, call, meet up. Miss Joyce Lee? Yes. Veronica, y'all listening? <laughs> all that. All that. Yes. Because I'm pretty sure them young ladies have some ideas yes. and the juices are flowing. 
You know what Absolutely. I mean? And then getting together, you guys can definitely come up with something that is going to be phenomenal, not only for the culture, but for the kids, because they definitely going to need it. Absolutely. And not only that, but I, I'm pretty sure that the books are going to be here until my son gets older. You, you know what I mean? And then my out. kids, you know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, I remember Miss Dayon. She show was on the podcast. Yep. Know who that is. Absolutely. Look, we, we know and what's I, up. Okay. Yes. And I pray by the time my son gets to grade school that you are still teaching <laughs> i know that's a little while to go but listen because we we desperately need teachers like you you know what mm-hmm. i mean it's not too many teachers that are still teaching that don't just do it for the paycheck and that's it can't be for the paycheck because you guys don't make as much as you deserve to make talk that talk. But when you teaching you absolutely have to have a passion for it you know what i mean you absolutely have to love what you do because there is not enough money that can pay you all for what you do and I can attest that some of the parents are grateful more now than they were before because of the pandemic and having to step into those (laughs) shoes (laughs) and doing what they wouldn't typically you know have to do it got real yes it did it It really did get real it got real real and I'm hoping that there will not be another pandemic girl that by the time school start because listen it's been a while since I've been in school and I couldn't tell you where to start so by the time son gets older, I'm just like, okay, right. we absolutely need to go ahead and absolutely. yeah, have teachers like you still around and thrive. Girl, I would love to have your, your make son a difference in my class. In. Yes. Bring them. Absolutely. See you Monday through Friday. Yes. There we love go. it. There okay. Yes. I am so amazed at, uh, and you being a visual, a visual teacher, visual learner, visual, you know, just personal in general, it is amazing that you are bringing teaching to life. It is amazing that you are doing that. It's amazing that um, whatever lesson plans that you come up with, that you're wanting to make sure the kids get the most out of the lesson. Mm -hmm. And listen, it's nothing like being able to do lessons and the kids actually get life lessons. Yeah. Like filling out a job application. Come on. Like for real. (laughs) I remember growing up, my mom used to always be like, I can't wait till y'all get older and get a job. And I'll be saying that too, like, son, listen, I love you at this age, but yeah, yeah, your stuff is expensive, sir. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely expensive. So having lesson plans like that, where the kids can actually feel involved and be a part and really want to participate because they're actually getting the best out of the lesson. I love it. Thank you, girl. It's it hilarious. Awesome. And they give me some good ideas too. One boy, he knows I have a smoothie every day. And he was like, I oh, wouldn't wow. mind a smoothie. And so next week I plan on doing like a cooking class where mm-hmm. we make smoothies together and then we write a story about our process of making the smoothie. Oh, and that's so awesome. They give me the ideas of what they're looking for and I just... Yes, I, make it happen. Yes. That's awesome. So sis, before I let you go, I got one more thing I want to mention to you or I want you to kind of discuss. Any upcoming events that, events that you have? Yes, um, for a 913 day on the Kansas City side, Kansas City, Kansas side, uh-huh. um, on September 10th, um, we will be doing like a big like fair for kids. Um, I, I think it's at the city park. Um, I can confirm that address. Um, okay. It'll be on September 10th and it's to celebrate 913 day for the Kansas City, Kansas side. There will be um, activities for children. There'll be music, oh, wow. food. Um, lots of children book authors will be there. And so that's September 10th. Um, and then October 15th, I will be at uh, De La Salle for a I- big vendors event. Um, also selling my children's books and um, book characters. Oh, um, awesome. So, yeah, so there's um, events coming up. And then I want to say in November, um, one of the public libraries, Mid-Continent, they're going to be doing an author's fair. And so, oh, come on, author. Girl, <laughs> I was so excited. I think that's the thing that's been most intimidating is getting into like the libraries. Yes. Um, so that was one I was really, really excited to get a chance to be a part of. Um, those are three of the biggest events coming up awesome well sis i am so excited for you god is really working in your life and he is doing really big things for you and this is just the beginning he's not even finished so listen i'm looking forward to seeing notifications of you doing big things out here and i am so excited for you i'm gonna have to purchase them two books so i can read them the sun and maybe to help him sleep through the night because he likes to get up (laughs) so he needs some books that's gonna be soothing and kind of Yes. Put them to sleep and have them have a good night, a good night's rest. 
Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come and holler at me again, to sit down, have a chat with me about all the amazing things that are going on in your life. I am so excited to be able to partake and just see from afar what God is doing. Thank you so much for having me on again, sis. Anytime. I, hey, Listen. I'm back. Okay. okay. Look, coming keep back. doing it. Keep doing things. Keep doing things. Keep uh, thriving. Keep really doing what you are doing for them kids, for them babies, because I promise you, it really is making an impact on their lives. And I'm sure that their parents really appreciate you as a teacher. Thank you so much. I you are so you. welcome. No yeah. problem. So I'm, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Queen's Lounge podcast. If you have not, go ahead over to Ms. Dayon Richardson's page. Just give us the info so we can go ahead and purchase them books. Yes, you go to dayonnicole.com to get your copies as well as use promo Queen's Lounge to get you a 10% discount. Awesome. Thank you so much, sis. I love you and I appreciate you so much for tuning in. Thank y'all. Peace.